Hey, what's up, Reefers? Kind of busy setting up the Christmas tree today, so I think the vlog will end just right here. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. There's no way I'll do that to you guys. So today I'm really lucky to have two beautiful ladies helping me with the Christmas tree, as well as recording this video. We got Myra right here, and then behind the camera, we have Sally, who everybody loves. So, in my reef tank, there's uh, really good days and really bad days. And today, unfortunately, is one of those really bad days one. But I promise I'll share everything with you guys, so let's get right down to it. So we're going to talk about the 45-gallon tank first. As you can see, it's missing quite a few things. Uh, namely, over at the top right corner, uh, there used to be a pretty sizable SPS colony that's gone. What happened is that two days ago, all of a sudden, I started seeing a white spot. And then just throughout the two days, the tissue just started peeling off. It's kind of crazy seeing the tissue just peels off a coral just like that. So that may be RTN that I've heard so much about, but I've never experienced by myself. And it's kind of shocking too, because that coral is supposed to be relatively easy in terms of SPS, and I'm having trouble, uh, I'm having trouble keeping it. That's really concerning. Now sliding down to that green piece right there, if you look behind it at the far branch, you see a little white tip as well. So that part was kind of missing the tissue as well. And that happened maybe three days ago. So I think something happened three days ago that I was not aware. I'm not positive what it is. It may be um, alkalinity swing from the top off because I did not mix the calc well enough. Or it could be, uh, sadly, the decomposing starfish. So two weeks ago, I got a starfish, which is no longer in the tank. It... It did not do well. I think I rushed the accl acclimation process. Instead of spending like two hours on it, I threw it into the tank after about 40 minutes, which is apparently not enough. And from the, for the two weeks, one of the legs just started decomposing. I thought maybe if I give it some time, it would slowly regenerate and recover. But as you may already know, starfish really rarely will recover from a damage like that in a home aquaria. So today, after seeing the fact that I lost some SPS, even though I'm not sure if it's due to the starfish decomposing, I figure, okay, maybe it's time to pull the starfish out. So I did just that. Um, I find the quickest way possible. I pull the starfish out. I just put it in the freezer and hopefully it'll you know, go peacefully. And that, that is really upsetting because I really, really, really like that starfish. So I may stay away from starfish for a while. Now, going back to the SPS, uh, obviously, I lost that one. This one seems to be under control. The green one seems to be under control. The RTN kind of stopped at the tip. And I used to have two frags right here. Uh, they were just, the one in the back that was kind of bleached just never kind of recovered. So I think that was a goner from day one. The one further up, it was, the tissue started receding as, as well. So I figured, okay, well, forget it. Let's just kind of remove it and we'll just, you know. Actually, no, I didn't remove it. Just kidding. I moved it back up there. So it's up there, uh, back there is a little bald spot with like a white patch as well that's bleached. The tissue kind of peeled off, but it seemed to have stopped. And my, you may be thinking, okay, you should start testing the water. And I fully intend to. I ordered the um, elk tester uh, henna checker from BLS and that should be coming anytime soon, hopefully tomorrow. So I can test the tank water. But I think at this point, whatever was affecting the coral should be done because everything else seems healthy. The tissue receding stopped except for the, uh, the obviously the small colony that I lost. But the funny thing is everything else seems to be really happy in the tank. In fact, look at the green kryptonite candy cane. The tissue was kind of damaged um, on the two far polyps before, but it has kind of almost fully recovered and it started filling in nicely. So once I kind of nailed it down to the spot and stopped moving it around, it seems to be doing well. As well as all the other uh, zoas and stuff like that, everything else is happy. So I'm kind of scratching my head. I really think it's probably the elk swing um, that did it in. I'm not sure the, star the starfish decomposing contributed to the matter as well. But, you know, after this experience, I'm kind of nervous about just keeping SPS in general. I feel like there's a little bit touch and go. I'm perfectly fine with keeping the easier SPS similar to the uh, Manipura caps. Uh, and also, like, on the other side, we have, like, the green ones in the back. That's uh, a little easier to keep. So, I guess, like, my mentality or my hope for this 45-gallon cube tank is just to have a tank that does not worry you. There's no worries in this tank. Hakuna Matata! And it just, I'll just keep like simpler to keep coral. And I think I may just cap it in terms of a SPS to the Monty cap, pun intended. 
and we'll just call this done. I'll just keep um, easy to keep LPS, easy to keep SPS and soft coral and just be happy about it. I think down the road when I get a larger tank and uh, I have everything dialed in, then I'll try the intermediate SPS again. But for now, I think I'm, I'm <laughs> let's call the SPS experiment done. Uh, this is this is all I'll go with. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe I'll change my mind down the road. But for now, I'm kind of gun shy. So that is the update for the 45 gallon cube tank. But let's move on really quickly to the 17 gallon drop off tank. So the last time you guys saw the seven, this, this tank, it was dry. Uh, I added water to the tank. I suspected a lot of crap, a lot of dust came out of these bikini rocks, just like you guys expected, you guys warned me about. So for the last week, I have been just siphoning out all the dust uh, so if you kind of look from top down, you see that you may think this is dirty, but you have not seen this tank when it first got water in there. I've done one water change and I've like, I think like every other day I just use like a turkey baster and just siphoning all this little fine particle up. And I also use the turkey baster to kind of blow through all the holes in the rock to make sure I get all the uh, decomposing organics, right, or ash or dust out from all these rock. So I think right now it's looking pretty good. It's not too difficult to get all these particles out like I was afraid of. Uh, one thing that I think really helped, thanks to my friend Julian's recommendation, is you look under in the back chamber, I have two pretty sizable filter floss in the back. I believe these are 50 mic micron if I remember right. Uh, these are from Aquatic Experts. Uh, I buy their filter socks as well. I really like the products. They're priced fairly and the quality is good. So I put this filter floss in the first, uh, the first chamber as well as the middle chamber where the water kind of have to flow through in order to capture any free floating particle. And they seem to be doing a pretty good job because the water has really cleared up and I noticed a lot less sand on the bottom of the, uh, of the tank. And here is the filter floss that I purchased and I'll cut some for Sally as well for her tank because this is seriously a huge amount and oh, so it's a, thank you. it's a great value. Yeah, so 17 gallon tank, I think it's about one third the way through cycling, the initial cycling. Um, it's been running with water for one week and recently I added, actually added the um, auto top off if you want to swing over here. We have a five gallon auto top off container right here. I'm not dosing any calc yet because there's no coral in the tank so there's no point. And up here I'm using the Smart ATO Micro. I have the Smart ATO in my 45 gallon tank. I like the product. So if you swing around to the other side, there's a little shining blue light in the back chamber. And that is to tell you that the uh, Smart ATO is operational. And once the water drops a little bit, then it'll kick in uh, the new water. And this really helps. This helps a lot. Uh, because I, I honestly don't really like the water flow sound when the water level is a little low. And this completely eliminated it because the water level is consistent. And I, I can see the filter floss is changing color, so it is capturing particle that, um, that helps clear up the water. So I think I'm starting to see a little bit of brown algae that's starting to appear uh, on the rocks. I'm not sure if these are just a natural rock color, <laughs> like as my wishful thinking, or if like brown diatom slowly appearing. But I think the tank may be cycled in under maybe two weeks. I'll give it probably two weeks. In the meantime, I'll be consistent in terms of siphoning up all the uh, detritus, all the little dust and rot, little, little pebble particle on the bottom. Uh, but so far, it's, it's been good. It's pretty smooth sailing. So that is it for this update. I'm trying to keep it short, especially since now we have two tanks to deal with. I don't want to like uh, <laughs> jam up your uh, YouTube feed. So thank you for all your time. Uh, check out this video. And would you guys like to say bye, Sally and uh, Myra? Just swing around and be like, yo. Bye. bye. All right, see you guys next time.